representation of Treasure Island, which is what, um, last time I was here, for those of you who were there, that's the story that I couldn't really talk about. Um, uh, so that's the one that I've now, it's now done, it's happened, I've recorded it, it's now in post-production, it'll be coming out, be launched next year, uh, and it's got um, lovely people in it, it's got uh, Nicholas Farrell, who's a fantastic actor, it's got Tom Baker in it, and various other people. So that, I'm working on post-production on that, and I've got, um, uh, I'll be directing some more audio Doctor Who later, and hopefully the Daleks will be trying to get 50th anniversary of the notes, I don't know yet. Does anyone have any questions? Who does the voice of the Daleks? Who does the voice of the Daleks? It's the same actor uh, who, who does all the Dalek voices, all the Cybermen voices, all the Jadoon voices, uh, the Axon voices, and a couple of other ones. There's an actor called Nicholas Briggs, who um, is, is a, he's a normal actor as well, but he's a, he's a voice actor. And again, he, in his bedroom, started to do uh, Doctor Who stories when he was like, well, he was about 20, 25, something like that. Um, and he then, based on those Doctor Who stories, which he used to do the voices of the Daleks, and he used to play the Doctor in them, and he got friends in the Vale of Hearts. Uh, some of the friends were like people like Mark Gatiss and people like that. Um, and based on that, he then created the company, Big Finish, that I now work for. And when Russell T. Davis uh, brought back Doctor Who, he was a fan of Big Finish, and he got Nick Briggs to do the Dalek voices in the TV series because he'd done them uh, for his own audios. Uh, there. So again, that's a question of someone a guy in his bedroom being passionate about something, starting his own business, and now he's he does all the voices in, in, in Doctor Who. So it's, um, it can be done, and is frequently done. It's not like a rarity. So any other questions? There must be some, come on. Yes? How do you find your voice actors? How do I find my voice actors? Yeah, um, well, there is a sort of, I get a lot of submissions from actors who sort of send me um, things by things saying I know because I, I probably I've directed 80 audio productions maybe um, so that's a lot of actors who think they have 10 in each that's eight times of actors uh, so actors are very good at finding people who might employ them so I get a lot of submissions but I have to say I'm, I'm very it's very rare that I would employ someone from a submission um, usually uh, I know who I want for various parts and I will then phone up their agents and negotiate with it. Or it can be someone I've worked with, because I, as an actor, I, I work by a theatre director as well, I work with an actress and so So I'll always, in my mind, sort of have, oh, I think they'd be perfect for this, and then get them in to do that, or I saw Sheridan Smith in this, and I think I'll get her in to do that, and things like that. So it's, it's, it is that. What I try to do with any cast is I try to have a couple of big-ish names, a range of middle range actors who I know and I've worked with before, and then one or two new blood, because I do feel that it is just behoven upon me to bring new people in um, and uh, to, to give them a taste of it. Uh, and you find lots of new talent. And you know, Joe Thomas, I worked with Joe Thomas from um, The In Between Us before he's in The In Between Us and things like that. So it's just, you know, try and find things and then they move on. It's always one, it's just rare that it's actually yeah, the head of the year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm usually telling people to turn off. That's my age and the answer is yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, she's always spending me as well. Does that answer your question? Yes. Um, so, yeah. In voice acting. In voice acting. Yeah. Well, if you want well, to be breaking into voice acting. Yeah. But that's good, you want to sort of book to the blind or something like that. Oh, uh, no, I've always said people on network, which is like an episode. So I've had to remember. That's okay, no, that's okay. So that, um, well, I'm a storybook company, so there is stories, chapter by chapter, in the TV series. And Great. I've always had different stories and the authors are on the different stuff. Okay, well, the things that you should do next are, you should, there are a whole load of voice agencies. Um, voiceover agencies, so if you just type that into Google, you'll come up with them, Cast Away, Yak and Yak, uh, Susan Brown, well, there's an awful lot of Sue Terry voices, people. So, so get short, some good clips, short clips, like 30 seconds of you doing, a, or two, a minute of you doing a narration from an audio book, 30 seconds of you doing character voices, 30 seconds of you doing this, doing that, uh, and then um, that's your sort of calling card, send those to to the contact people say, I'd like to submit my stuff. They'll listen to them, and they may have a gap that they think you can fill. Have you got my website? Can you access things on my website? Um, I don't know. 
because there's I've got voice reels on there and I can show you what sort of thing you might be thinking of doing. And uh, and it depends what you want to do. I mean, if you if you're the sort of person who's got like it would be great at doing audiobook reading, then just send a plain clip if you're doing a, a, a straight reading. If you want to do drama stuff, personally, I need people who can multi-voice because yeah. there'll be a I'll have a script which has got 20 characters and I'll only have a budget for 10 actors, so I need people who can do different voices. Um, so I tend to get people who, who have a, a wide range on their audio clips. So you send that, or you put it on your website, and you have that up. If you want to become a professional actor, you should really think about it. Um, paying, I think it's about 120 quid a year to a company called Spotlight, which is the actor's directory. Um, and they will have your photo on there, they'll have your sort of CV, your details, voice clips that you can upload, uh, uh, sort of um, show you can, you can share. And then um, I, as a director, will come along and I'll type in, I need an actress who, who uh, is about this age, who looks great in spectacles, and who can do different voices. And then you'll come up among a number of other ones and then I'll sort of listen to your voice clips and think, yeah, that's good, I can match her up with this person, and then I'll phone either Spotlight, who will represent you, or I'll phone your agent if you have an agent, and then uh, off you move on. With audio, I don't tend, I, I won't tend to, unless it's a really specific thing, like I need someone who can do an Eskimo accent. Um, unless it's a really specific thing, I, I, I tend to go on what I hear on the voice clips and, and whether or not I know the actor, uh, and then I'll hire them from that. Um, so, yeah. It does, it, it's, it's quite sort of egalitarian. I'm not going to care whether you've done 800 audio books or, or one. Your voice sounds good and it sounds like you can act on high. Any other Are there any other um, audio books, you, books you'd like to adapt for audio books in the future? Um, what, sort of in the Treasure Island? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes, definitely. <laughs> A whole range of them. I'd love to do Jules Verne stuff. Um, and. Uh, I'd love to do sort of the Lost World, Ken Doyle stuff, um, and John Buck, and just adventure stuff. I like because adventure stories work really well on audio if you do them well, because you, you have you have a, a Hollywood budget effectively because you've got sound effects. Um, so I think that kind of stuff, or, or you know, the um, uh, sort of I did Phantom of the Opera, but you, you do Jekyll and Hyde or something like that. So that kind of stuff I would like to I like to create a fan of Victorian. Any other question? About any subject at all? <laughs> yes. Um, I don't really know anyone who works in theatre, but I'm actually encouraging you why the theatre for them, theatre is Is there any advice you can give to networking people who work within in theatre? Theatre, yeah. So what, do you want to go into theatre writing or theatre directing or what? Theatre writing, I don't really know that much about, about theatre or the industry surrounding theatre is, is kind of uh, it's kind of an odd situation for you to be writing for theatre but to not know much about how that industry actually works as opposed to television or, or Hollywood or the radio. Well, so I think you're, a good routine is festivals, mm -hmm. um, like you know, the Edinburgh Fringe and stuff like that. So if you think you can write a little short piece and you've got a friend who can direct it and, and some friends can be in or you can be in it or whatever, it's well worth just giving it a go, creating it. I'm sure there are, there are theatre spaces here within the university, aren't there, where the drama students put on stuff today? Um, yeah. I mean, you could give it a go there, and then when you've honed that and you think that's good, then uh, uh, literally just speak to a small theatre. Most theatres have studio theatres, studio spaces, um, which are really very reasonably uh, done. So you'll, you'll get the main house, which will have whatever, it'll have. Um, Cats play or something like that. And then they'll have a studio space which has quite a quick turnover, like they'll be a play and it's a week, or they'll have lunchtime slots or something like that. It's a great way of just you speak to the theatre, you, you, you say, Look, I've got this play, it's a two hander, um, and it's about you know, 30 minutes long. It'd be great if I could do it lunchtimes in your, in your space. Theatres will always want people to be in their building. So just write to the administrator or, or go to, to speak to the theatres there. Um, or if you want to have a more hands on thing, then speak to them about becoming uh, involved in stage management at a theatre, um, or even front of house. I mean, a lot of people who work in West End theatres, sort of selling tickets and things like that, are either actors or uh, people who are interested in working in the in the theatre. They then get to meet everyone who's there. They get to chat to them uh, and get a feel for how it all works. Um, I think your best route as a theatre writer is to write some stuff 
try and put it on in small venues here at the university, whatever, and then if you think it's good enough, take it to a, 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 either a festival, like, you must have drama festivals in and around here, certainly have Fringe in London, a lot of Fringe stuff, or do the end of the Fringe. Uh, and I, I did, one of the first things I did was, was uh, end of the Fringe, and it was, it was brilliant to sort of go up there. Uh, and again, it doesn't cost the earth, it's perfectly achievable, and you meet so many people socially there. Uh, so yeah, I think that would be a, that would be a good way in. It's just to it's to sort of write something and then and then approach some theatres and, and chat to them about it, or do do either small paid work or every now and then you know uh, unpaid work at a theatre and and get a feel for it. Because theatres are always looking for people who, are, who can help backstage. Thank you. Good and good luck. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, if, if you have. Um, Portfolio or back catalogue kind of uh, projects that you've written or are still in the, in the process of work. And you, you are hoping, as obviously, as I'm sure you are, hoping it's sort of to break into the industry, whether it be radio, theatre, television, film, whatever. Um, how important at this stage of the career would you say that being, having an agent, an agent would be? Industry agent or acting agent? Or an agent. Yeah, the, like the agent who, who can try and publicise your work and, and kind of like take it from represent you, if you will. Would yeah. you say that that's a fundamental part of it at this early stage? No. Or, no, just, just to write things on spec and kind of. A literary work. agent, I don't have a literary agent, um, uh, but I know lots of people do have literary agents. Uh, but literary agents operate pretty much the same way that acting agents do, which is that they will submit you for, for various things, but it's very rare that your agent will actually get you the work. Your agent is there to negotiate your contract. Um, so, uh, or randomly, like when someone phones up my acting agent and says, can I have your, the actor who does that, they say they're not available, why don't you try him? That's, that's where their agent sort of calls up. But it's very rare that my agent will actually actively get me work. Uh, it does happen occasionally. I've got a, um, a feature film several years ago called Children of Men, and that was simply my agent pushed for me, and they saw me uh, to do it. Um, but uh, the normal agent there is, is there to make sure you're not being screwed over on your contracts. Uh, so, in terms of opening doors for you, you don't need an agent at this, at this phase. If you can get one, that's great. Uh, uh, but the standard way that agents work is they will take whatever percentage it is, about 15% usually, of your money, uh, and they'll take that for negotiating your contract. They won't take that for getting you the job, pretty much. Um, but as you move up, as you get more important, as your work gets recognised, it's good to have an agent who will then possibly be able to submit you the, because things have slightly more value if they come via an agent. Um, so if I'm a publisher and two novels come to me, and uh, I've not read either of them, I'm probably more likely to read the one that was submitted by an agent that I know and trust, who says this is right up your street, this is exactly the sort of stuff you're into. I'm more likely to read that than I am the, the sort of blank submission. Um, and similarly with an actor, I sort of will look at it, and unless it's something specific like voice that I can hear instantly whether or not I like them, if it's someone I've not worked with before, I will have to go, tend to go more with an agent that I trust. Um, than someone who's not necessarily got an agent. Uh, uh, and again, it sort of goes on, on what they've done as well. If there's an actor that's not done anything for 20 years, there's usually a reason why they've not done anything for 20 years. They've not been sort of sitting there quietly perfecting their technique or doing something. It's, it's probably because they're either a nightmare to work with and everyone's fed up with working with them anymore, or they can't do it anymore. Um, so, but that, you're talking about the beginning of the career arc. And so I would say, it would be nice to have an agent, but it's by no means essential for any of these projects. Because I, I, I read somewhere that um, I, was, I was looking, because I, I subscribed to a few um, writing websites and getting and stuff like that. It's like at the early stage of your career, when you first break through, it's very important. But if you get a big break, for example, and the paperwork is gone up, like, like say that's when you want to have an agent. Yeah. Like those, there are more useful things you can be doing in terms of like, people who would be in contact with in the early stages and things like that. Is there anything that you can suggest like, where you would gain some value from, uh, from a supervisor or any kind of capacity of somebody, not, not an agent, but somebody? Well, again, I think this is the thing that Grant's saying about social media. Um, 
you can talk to people who are writers and on that social media thing, and then you'll get sort of a network of people who might be able to read your work for you and things like that. So it's, that, so that's a good way of, of doing that. It's effectively like going to a writing group or a writing class or something like that, and then mixing those guys. So you can do it virtually, as it were. Now you can do it on on the net. You can send them. You can drop box them uh, PDFs of your work and stuff like that, and they can talk about them there. So I think uh, that's a that's a good way of sort of getting to to speak to people and, and people have similar interests to you. But I know lots of writers who have gone from having literary agents to not having them. <laughs> so I'm saying, actually, no, I think I, the, the guy, I know a guy who created, pretty much created the Big Breakfast, uh, a, a lovely writer, a comedy writer called mm -hmm. Nicholas Hildred, I was at school with him. And he, uh, he was just finding that, that his agent was only interested in pushing the same sort of stuff that he'd done with the Big Breakfast. And he just thought, I don't want to write that anymore. I want to write something else. So he just ditched his agent and then started, you know, once he'd got some connection, started working through that and working socially through things. Everything is quite flexible. You'll find actors like me who direct, and you'll find writers who act, and you'll find everyone's sort of flexible. There's no sort of defined, you know, they do this and they do that. It's a very exciting thing. Um, and, uh, uh, and I think, you know, you, you will find connections that way. And so, I mean, I'm speaking to loads of people I don't even know, I've never met on Twitter. Uh, famous people as it were, and you don't know me from Adam, but you'll find little bits like that, and then eventually you might be from my accident, or you might get something by them. But competitions is always a very good way of testing your work out, both theatre competitions for theatre writers, and, and, you know, poetry competitions, or writing competitions, or short film competitions. There are an awful lot of them out there, and it's always worth giving you a go. So I would always, you know, and then you'll meet people through that. <coughs>